last time we had you on, uh, we were talking about gold and how, uh, and that's another option for people obviously to diversify. And a lot of people have been doing that. There's been this run on gold recently. The price has been elevated. Um, and really, I remember last time we had you on, you said that, you know, this time might be um, different than like 2008 when we saw the stock market crash and gold crash briefly as well, where we might just see a sustained elevated uh, elevated price for gold and that being sustained and it could go higher from here even though we've uh seen this run already and it seems like we've continued to see um elevate an elevated price for gold your perspective on that is that still your view that we may not see a pullback from here well yeah the dynamic so far has been um partially at least people pulling money out of their bank accounts because they're worried and partially at least uh, buying some gold and silver with the proceeds um, that could happen um, going forward in a much bigger way if more banks get into trouble and more depositors um, get worried. Because I think it's safe to say that, um, you know, people don't pay attention to this stuff the way you and I do, Elijah. So there's a lot of people out there who really don't necessarily understand any of this yet. And uh, they're living their lives and not paying too much attention to what's happening with their bank. Well, bigger headlines will bring more people into an understanding of what's happening, leading to them pulling money out, leading them to them maybe buy, buy more gold and silver coins. Um, so that could be one dynamic going forward that helps precious metals. But the, uh, the monetary conditions tightening thing that I talked about before uh, is probably bad for precious metals. So... That, that's the thing that would keep me from mortgaging the house and buying a bunch of silver right now, uh, that, that we could have dramatically tighter money leading to a dramatic slowdown in the economy, leading to a bunch of different sectors blowing up and you know, cri a big crisis from, uh, from that perspective, which might suck gold and silver down with it. So, um, so far that hasn't happened. So far the dynamic has been positive for gold and silver and it's possible that it continues, but don't bet the farm on that. Um, by all means, diversify some of your cash into precious metals. You should have been doing that all along. You should definitely be doing it now uh, via maybe dollar cost averaging or something like that, where you buy X amount of gold and or silver every month and uh, just let it build up. You should be, totally be doing that. Um, but um, dumping everything you've got and buying precious metals, that might end up being, you know, a brilliant strategy. And there might be some people who become um, household names because they did that. But there's some risks associated with that. So I wouldn't advise people doing that right now. But uh, always gold and silver are good things to own. And as we head into um, a period of crisis, um, it should absolutely be a diversification for people that have a lot of dollar cash or a lot of bond funds or anything um, that, that would be classed as a financial asset right now is at risk. So if you've got a um, big giant money market fund, a huge bank account, uh, bond funds in your IRA, you might want to lighten up on those things and you might want to direct some of that money into precious metals. I think that's very good. Again, diversification, I think, is key here. We do have a viewer's question that kind of ties back to what we were discussing at the beginning here. Um, John wants to know, why do people continue to trust what the Fed says and does? So it seems like even though there's been this tremendous failure on the part of the experts, people, a lot of people still listen to them, especially in the financial world. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? After Because it's really been a 50-year experiment of... Um, governance by expert and the results have been catastrophic and the fed is like the poster child for that everything they say eventually turns out to be wrong uh and um, the, the current chair of the fed right now is at least understandable and reasonably articulate but um fed policy has been a disaster from day one going all the way back to uh, really the, the 1990s is when the, the real disaster started when they bailed out everybody in sight and created something called the Greenspan put, which told the banks, go ahead and take as many risks as you want, uh, reap the rewards of all those fees, and if, if it blows up on you, we'll bail you out. And uh, it, it's been the same ever since. So the fact that somebody sees Jerome Powell on CNBC or someplace like that and listens to what he says and takes that as some version of the truth is astounding to me. You know, I, I, <laughs> I think it's a learning process. Like, like I said before, 
a lot of people don't pay the kind of attention that uh, guys like us do. You know, we're, we kind of obsess over these things. Other people do their jobs, play with their kids, hang out with their friends, and, and don't spend a lot of time thinking about this. So it takes longer for new information to change their minds. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's completely possible that we've got a critical mass of people out there who are all changing over all at once. And then the response to Fed actions and just government experts in general uh, is going to be dramatically different than it has been in the past. This thing with public health was huge because um, a lot of people had learned not to trust the military industrial complex and not to trust the big banks. But we still trusted the CDC. We still, we still trusted our doctor. Uh, but then those guys did an awful lot of things that led to a, a, a lot of people losing trust in them. Uh, and, and for a lot of people, that was almost the last straw. It was like, OK, there are, there are literally no experts I can trust anymore. You know, and I've got to start changing my behavior to take care of myself without relying on these guys for their opinions and their advice. And uh, as that spreads, as that critical mass grows, uh, I, I think that it's completely possible that we just totally lose faith, faith in all the experts. In other words, our trust horizon shrinks from very distant to local. In other words, we don't trust people that we can't shake hands with and, and look in their eyes and uh, know their families and see what they've done um, in detail in the last 20 years. Uh, so we buy food from local farmers. We grow our own food. We, uh, we start looking at um, food as medicine and supplementation instead of just taking whatever pill the doctor gives us. We uh, educate ourselves about vaccines and we don't give our kids 39 different vaccines by the time they're four years old. We research the ones that we think are most necessary and we limit um, the vaccination of our kids to those handful of things that have been proven to work over time. Um, and we don't trust the dollar anymore. We start loading up on real assets that the government can't inflate away. And that is farmland, which, which by the way, farmland is a good uh, topic here to expand on a little bit because lately the, the news has been coming out about the amount of farmland that um, the, the very rich are buying. Bill Gates is now the biggest owner, biggest private sector owner of farmland in I think the world. And then some billionaire just bought something like 5,000 acres in Wyoming uh, for basically his uh, doomsday bunker. That's where the guy's going to go if everything falls apart. Uh, so farmland and ranch land are suddenly very hot assets that are being bought up by the, the handful of people rich enough to buy huge amounts of those things. Uh, so if you have the chance to own something like that, food producing land, that's definitely a thing you want to buy. And the reason you want to buy it is because we cannot trust the experts who are in charge of our food system and our political system anymore. We want to be self-sufficient self um, in as many ways as possible. And food is obviously the biggest one. So uh, I, th I think that's dawning on more and more people based on how in demand homestead type land is now. Uh, and that's a, that's a big sign of a sea change in people's attitudes that when, it's, when it happens in one sector of the economy or the political system, it spreads to others because once you lose trust in one set of guys with Yale educations wearing suits and talking to you on CNBC, you kind of lose faith in all of them. So, I, you know, this is coming and, and the wave is building. And with your own money, you want to get in front of that wave and ride it, uh, not oppose it and be, you know, smashed down by it.